Thank you. I was in a space, I can take about four or five steps, pivot, and take four or five steps in the opposite direction. The place I was in was smaller than most of your restrooms. It was surrounded by three concrete walls, and one wall was made of iron bars. And I remember asking myself, what mistake could I make in life that would warrant me to live any part of my life in such a small space? I was on a tour at Angola State Penitentiary. Some refer to it as the farm. It sits about 56 miles north of Baton Rouge. And I couldn't help but notice at the time there were more than 6,000 inmates and most of them looked like me, African-American males. And as I walked down one of the camps, I heard someone call my name. I admit I was a little embarrassed being with law enforcement colleagues, so I ignored. But the second time I heard my name was a little different. That voice. Curiosity set in. I turned around and I saw an arm extended through the bars, motioning me to come forward. And as I walked closer and closer, I saw a beautiful smile illuminating through the bars. A smile I hadn't seen in many years. It was a childhood friend. And the first thing he asked me was, how your mom and them? <laughs> how your mom and them is one word. Don't ask me how to spell it. But the translation is, how's your family? And we began to converse, and he asked about my family, and I asked about his. And for that brief moment in time, we were far past those concrete walls and iron bars, past the guard shack, far away from the barbed wire fences to a place. Many years ago, where we grew up, where the levees broke in New Orleans, Louisiana, a place we affectionately called home. Now, I had obviously taken up too much time because my colleagues say it's time to go. I politely said my goodbyes to my childhood friend. And I don't remember the rest of the tour that day, but I do remember my drive home that evening and I remember asking myself, how could two people grow up at the same time in the same place and end up in two different paths in life? Me moving through the ranks of law enforcement and my childhood friend living his life in a jail cell. And I began to think about that. And so many other young men from my community who was in the same situation. And I began to think about those who have had some success in life. What did we do right? What did they do wrong? And I began to explore that, and I remember thinking, I know they wasn't smart enough. But then I remember one day when I was on my way to school at the University of New Orleans, and I stopped on the corner. Back then, we called it the set, and I encouraged a friend to come to school with me that day. The classroom was fairly large, so his presence went unnoticed. But on a drive back from school, he said, I could have gone to college. I said, why? He said, because I understood what the professor was saying. Now look, y'all, I was shocked because I didn't understand what the professor was saying. <laughs> you see, the subject was finite math. And my high school friend who dropped out of high school, spent one day in class, understood probabilities, equations, and fractions, and I needed group study sessions and, a, and a, a personal tutor just to get by with a C in the course. So it obviously wasn't because I was smarter than him. I know what it was. It was the environment that we grew up in. See, we grew up in a disinvested neighborhood. There was a lot of drugs, a lot of violence. And we were locking black men up for crack cocaine and throwing away the keys at a time when black boys needed their fathers most. 
when we treated addiction like a crime and not like a disease. We are still rebounding from that. We still have generational trauma from our response to that epidemic. Facts. Maybe it was the system. That's what it was. The criminal justice system. And the, the systemic racial issues that negatively impact communities of color. There was a lot of corruption back then. Or maybe, just maybe, it was personal accountability. They were old enough to know better. They knew right from wrong. Maybe it was their own fault. Or maybe it was this, or maybe it was that. And I began to go through all of these reasons, all of these explanations for the condition of my friends and others just like them. And I narrowed it down to three significant things. Three significant things. The first I learned from my mother, bless her heart. The second I learned from a wise man that I met in a French Quarter in New Orleans, Louisiana, who would take pictures. The first was education. Let me hear you say education. We have too many young black men, young black boys who are dropping out of high school, who are dropping out of middle school. The young men that are entering our prison system are not receiving the proper education. I never knew dropping out of high school was an option. My mama didn't play that. Never knew that even existed. Too many. The second is the three C's. Let me hear you say the three C's. three C's. Control, choices, and consequences. My mother, my family, my uncles taught me to control my emotions. They taught me anger management. I learned that sometimes when you make emotional decisions, they have bad consequences. I learned through discipline from my behavior that there were consequences control choices and consequences, a fear of going to jail, consequences, a fear of disappointing my family and my mother, consequences, but more importantly, a fear of letting myself down, self-awareness. We have young men that are involved in this culture of violence that don't understand the three C's. Young men, when I look at the victim and the suspect in many of these cases, they dress alike, they look alike, they walk alike, their hairstyles alike, they have the same swag, and they're killing a reflection of themselves because they don't love what they see, man, in the mirror. The third is the three F's. Let me hear you say the three F's. Faith and family first. I talk to the director of juvenile services, and when young folks come through the juvenile system, there's a form where we ask what religion they identify with. 90% of those forms are blank. There must be a fear of God. Our young people don't identify with any religion. We have to promote the three F's of faith and family first because I am telling you as your chief of police that we cannot arrest our way out of this problem. We are dealing with the symptoms. We must support and invest in the causes of crime. That's mental health care. That's poverty. That substance abuse care, education, addressing the issue of why our young people don't identify with any faith. We got to get from behind the pulpit, pastors. We have to bring family to that level of village. We are receiving too many calls for service for matters that were once resolved at the family and community level calling the police on kids who playing in the yard. Come on. We can do better. 
and we must do better as a community. 30 plus years I've been in law enforcement, and I am telling you this is not a police issue. Crime is a community issue. And I've worked for, I've led, and I've worked side by side with the finest men and women who wear this uniform. True public servants who demonstrate daily the values of loyalty, duty, respect, honor, integrity, and personal courage, who embrace the changes in law enforcement, who embrace community policing, who embrace implicit bias training, who embrace procedural justice training, and who support the passage of the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. Our communities deserve improvements in policing in this ever-changing environment, period. And we can do that together as a community. But we can't give up on our young black boys. We can't. Oh, I remember that beautiful smile that was illuminating through the bars. And just as I was a little apprehensive to turn around back then, I feel those same emotions today as I see that beautiful smile in the audience from Angola Penitentiary. And I'm going to ask that young man to step up and join me on stage. And the reason The reason why this is important, because what he represents is, he may not have understood the three C's at the time he made that decision at 16 years old, but he believed in the three F's. See, his mother never stopped praying for him. His family never gave up on him. His uh, warden, Beryl Kane, never stopped praying for him. And he understood that life isn't all always about the mistakes, but how you respond to adversity is more important than the hardship itself. And what I want to tell him is, I am proud of the father that you are, the husband that you are, the man that you've become. I am proud that you are out there spreading the word so that others don't make the mistake you make. And I want to tell you, brother, I love you. I love you, man. I'm sorry. Let me say something. We can come together as a community and save our young black boys, because that's who is involved in a lot of the violence here. But we can't give up on them. We have to set big, bodacious goals with them. We have to tell them that they are better than the statistics that we read about. We have to tell them that it's not a man to be on social media with Glocks talking about shooting your ops. Nah, that's not cool. That a real man walks away so he can live another day, so he can take care of his family, so he can be present with his kids. We have to deprogram the lie that they're out there living. But we cannot give up on them. When they don't listen, we have to pray more. We have to keep loving them. No, we're not going to take our streets back. We're going to love our streets back. And we're going to keep. And when they don't listen, we're going to keep coming. They're going to get tired of seeing us, and we're going to keep loving them. And we're going to keep loving them. And we're going to keep praying for them. And we're going to keep telling them that they are better than their situations. And we're going to keep on not giving up, even when they don't listen. We're going to keep coming back till they're tired of seeing us. More love. More blessings. More life. And if you don't think it's possible, God did. Thank you.